In this video, I want to talk about the top five things I wish I knew when I was starting my own business. If you are running your own business or thinking about running your own business or have already been running your own business for years, I just want to give you a big high five like Tina Fey does in 30 Rock where she's like high fiving a million angels because it is freaking hard work. It is not for the faint of heart. It is not easy. If it were easy, a lot more people would be doing it and I just want you to take a minute and celebrate yourself for doing it. One of the first things that I would suggest, so I'm gonna give you five topics, okay? Um, the first thing is that I would not do as many trades and I would have contracts in place for everything. So when you are a person who has a product that really helps people, marketing, florals, photography, a lot of people are going to want to do trades with you. They're going to say, oh, come take all the headshots for my company and I'll give you this thing. And I got roped into a lot of experiences like that in the first two years of my business, which actually were very detrimental to my soul because most of the people did not end up keeping their end of the deal. I had it with somebody with a logo, I had it with rental space for a studio, I had it with other agreements and I never had a contract in place and I gave amazing photos, worked my butt off, delivered them and did not get what I was promised in return. And I think that so often when we're starting a business, we think that we have to do everything for free. And I think that is the absolute wrong attitude that we're getting into. Now we want to incrementally increase our talent and then we can incrementally increase what we charge. But at the beginning, we don't have to charge zero. I saw a photographer once in Salt Lake City charging $30 for a mini session. What? The crap, people. I would say what the F, but I'm trying to keep this G-rated if you're watching it with kids in the room. So I don't understand that. Why, why, why? And if we sometimes approach our business with our own budgets in mind. I am not my ideal client. My ideal client has a much bigger budget than I do. And so I need to keep that in mind. Sometimes we market to ourselves or we look at our pricing list and think, well, I couldn't afford this. So who possibly could? A lot of people can. And you want to start marketing to those people. You want to definitely increase your skills. And there are definitely a lot of collaborations that I did with people who had equal talents and showed up to the shoot and delivered their commitment that day. But having these trades that go on to a nebulous area is one of the worst things I could say that you would do. The second part of that, of number five, is to always have a contract in place. Have model sign releases. If you're going into a business venture with anyone, if you're taking their photos with anything, have a contract in place place. So many times at the beginning, I didn't have a contract in place. And then if somebody came back to talk about things or want something different, or they didn't like the action that you took, they would complain and I had nothing to back it up. Now I have rock solid contracts. So if somebody comes and says, oh, I didn't want my photo on Pinterest or something, I say, well, I'm really sorry. Nobody ever voiced that to me. And in this contract that you sign, it says I have all rights to the images to publish them as I see fit. Obviously, I want to do things that my clients are happy with, but you're not going to please everybody all of the time. If you are, you do not, you're not doing your business right. You should uh, not always be pleasing everybody. The fourth thing that I would say to do, and this is key, 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 especially for me, is to use a calendar. I know that sounds crazy, but most of us have these long to-do lists and we're never going to finish everything on them. When you can calendar in the most important parts of your time and stick to it, once you become self-employed, you want to go out to coffee with everyone. Everyone's like, come to my dinner party. Come have coffee with me. You can come take some photos over here. Come do this. Your mom will call you every day to talk with you because she can because you're not at your day job anymore. I love you, mom, but now I have a scheduled time where I talk to my mother each week and it is so much better. I don't feel taken advantage of. I don't feel bad that I'm ignoring phone calls and the people who are closest to me understand that there are certain times when they can talk to me and certain times when they just can't. If you can really get rid of all distractions and be very disciplined about 
how you spend your time and how you give your time, you will have so much more time. If you don't take those 10 minute Facebook breaks every hour, you're gonna have two more hours by the end of the day where you get shit done. Sorry, kids in the room, I did, I let, I let it go. Okay, so that's number, that's number four. Number three is believe, expect, know with your core that problems are going to happen and that you have the cojones to deal with them, okay? You are going to have problems. People are going to have problems. People are going to complain. People are going, things are gonna show go wrong. Cameras are not going to work. Equipment is going to fail. Um, there's going to be miscommunication. But running your own business is a constant, I would say a constant flow of things going right and wrong. There are gonna just be some days where you have just effed up the whole day. And it's okay, because guess what? You're gonna wake up tomorrow and you're going to do better, hopefully. So really, really expect things to go wrong and don't let it destroy you when things do. And if you do get a complaint or you're having an issue with a client, take 24 hours to respond to it. Our first inclination, especially for us pleaser type personalities, is to respond immediately. And it's hard to um, not be emotional about it. It's hard to not totally justify ourselves or explain our side of it or whatever. And we will, ex you know, will respond. And the client is in the moment of heat as well, where they're feeling very passionate about what they're talking about. And so their emotions are in play. Usually if you give it 24 hours, think about the best way to serve your clients. That is, those are, that's the most important thing. I love my clients. I want to serve them. I want to give them everything they want without them walking all over me, expecting me to Photoshop a bazillion photos for free, right? So we have to have boundaries with our clients, but also have so much gratitude for them. And I find that I can respond so much more in gratitude and in serving them when I wait for my emotional side to die down a little. So I don't respond more than 24 hours and I do not respond outside of business hours. For some reason, when I first started my business, I would give my clients access to my cell phone or, or something where they could start texting me at 6 a.m. or they could write me an email at 10 p.m. No other business is open at 6 a.m. or 10 p.m. that they can have access to, so why should they have access to me? I have to be stalwart, keep all my communication via email, and make sure that I don't respond outside of business hours. I know that it's really hard and that we think that in this world of immediacy that we have to respond all the time and always be on, but that is one of the quickest ways that you're going to hate your job, you're going to experience burnout, and you're going to wish that you went back and had somebody else giving you that paycheck every month because you don't want the responsibility. Bam, I'm delivering it today, okay. Number two. Do not whatsoever in any situation ever, 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 ever ask your friends and family for advice about what you should do. If they are not in the thick of running their own business, bringing money in, and doing what you are doing, they are going to give you bad, fearful, lack, scarcity, horrible advice. They're going to tell you to go back and get a day job. They're going to tell you that you could not make it. They're going to tell you that it's crazy to do what you're doing. They're going to try to protect you just like that part of your brain that makes you scared of everything because we have innate needs as mammals to protect, to keep safe, to not take too many chances because that's how our ancestors back during the evolutionary days died, right? If they took a risk and a lion came out and got them, they were dead. So this is really scientific. Hello, I'd like to tell you, I don't even have a degree in science and I'm just laying down evolution like, what? So anyway, you want to not take their advice. I suggest getting in a mastermind and I highly suggest having a business coach who has your back, will give it to you straight, and will help you see your blocks clearly and help you move through them so that you can accomplish a lot. Plus, when you've invested in something like a business coach, you get things done. 
I upped my game with my business coach lately and because of the advice she gives and because of the amount I invested, I have gotten so much done the past month of being with her and it's just been awesome. Okay, and the number one thing, lean in close. I want to just give you a big hug. You need to love yourself. And this sounds totally corny, but it's true. When you run your own business, a lot of times you're going to put everybody else first. You're going to put every client need before your own. You're going to put every um, everything your children want and your spouse wants before your own because you feel so guilty for the amount of time it's taking to run your business. And the truth is, when we love ourselves, when we practice a daily practice of self-love, we practice forgiveness, we practice kindness, we put our bodies first, which is something I am right in the process of learning. I'm speaking from experience here. I put my clients first for three years and it caused me nothing but weight gain and being out of shape and never exercising and eating poorly because I was always at my computer and I just want to go back and hug, hug that person, hug me because now I'm in the change, the, the shift. And when I have my boundaries strong and I put my needs first, in everything, when I look at my, to, you know, my calendar, the things that I will not be negotiating on anymore is my time to meditate, my time to take a bubble bath, my time to go do yoga, whatever it is that I need to do so that I come back to my creative process, to my dream job, and do it better than ever. That is truly loving yourself, and I think that everybody out there is worth it and that that is the hardest one. We crave to be successful so much that oftentimes we are hurting ourselves in the process. So I wish you all the success in the world. I would love for you to come to one of my workshops. Please see my website for more details and um, hopefully we'll get to work with each other. What you can do after this video is schedule a discovery call with me. They're free calls for about 30 minutes where we can get clear on what your goals are for the next few months and see if I can help you get there. My passion and joy in life is helping other people succeed because I truly believe it's the way the world is going to change. When women and men are empowered, they love their jobs, they love their lives, they go out, they're able to make money to provide and have the life that they want, it creates a whole beautiful world where we all have that energy vibrating through and we're much more likely to go out and help others. All right, have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much.